Roche, Roche, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 
Hammer, Hammer, Hare, Hare. Bolo, Bolo. Rivo, Rivo. Hey, Hammer. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare Krishna, Krishna, the Tiger. Thai Gore, Hari 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 Thai Gore, Hari Hari Thai Gore, Jai Prabhu 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 Jai Prabhu Or Pemanandi, Hari 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 Bo, Sila Prabhupad Ki Jai, Hare Krishna Mahamantra Ki Jai, Hare Krishna, Ramadi Murti Sukalani Amena Tishtan, Nana Vatara Akaro Bhuvane Sukinchu, Krishna Swayam Sama Bhava Paraman Pamanyo, Go Vindam, Ari Purusham, Tamaham Bajanmi. Hmm. So, tomorrow we are honoring the appearance of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Ram. Hmm. Sita Ram, Lakshman, Hanuman Ki. Hmm. And so, last night we spoke a little bit. Today we'll speak another section of the Ramayana, which is really quite emotional, <laughs> very moving, very deep, very instructive. <laughs> and this is Bart's attempt to bring Ram back from the forest to the kingdom to rule. <laughs> hmm. uh, this might carry a lot of time, but let's see. Mm -hmm. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitamne Tasmai Shri. Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobi Stam Stapti Tam Yena Bhutale. Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadanti Swam Padanti Kam Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadad Har Siva Sri Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare hmm. We know the story of how the maidservant of Kaikei, the famous, or favorite, sorry, favorite wife of Rasarat, was influenced by her maidservant to change the whole course of events. Ram was meant to be installed on the throne the following day and preparations were being made for the celebration many weeks in advance. And now everyone was approaching the actual day, <clears throat> Ram's coronation. We know how Kaikei was influenced by Mantara to change the whole course of events and a request from her husband who had promised her a boon of asking anything he wanted from her, anything she wanted from him. He gave her two benedictions, 
she waited to this time and acting against her own nature and being influenced by bad association. She said Ram should go to the forest for 14 years and my son Bart should rule the kingdom. Of course, this was a great shock <clears throat> to everyone, especially to Dasarat, who tried to dissuade his favorite, youngest of all queens, Kaikei. But she was not to be dissuaded. Her mind was not to be changed. And so, uh, finally, he had to agree. And when Ram heard what was about to happen, he immediately accepted the fact that, yes, if this is what is supposed to happen, if this is the decision of my father, then I will go to the forest. Hmm. This is an interesting point here. Uh, you learn something very powerful by this one point, is that Ram was eager to take the throne because of the arrangements and the desire of his father. And now his father had changed and said that he should go to the forest. Of course, he reluctantly did it, but still he did it. And Ram said, if that is your decision, Father, then that is my desire also. So it's interesting how Ram was not attached. He was attached to the instruction and not to the position. <laughs> this is important for us to understand also in Krishna consciousness. The instruction coming from the spiritual master through their representatives is actually the connection that we have with Krishna. Whatever position we play, whatever service we have, or whatever position we have within the society, is secondary to the mood of obedience to superiors. That is first and foremost. Even if that apparently that instruction seems to be somewhat wrong, or not perfectly correct, still that principle is higher than the idea of what I want to do. So this is important. And Ram showed that by example, that he was willing to go to the, he was willing to accept the kingdom because his father wanted it. He was willing to go to the forest because his father wanted it. Either way, he was following the instructions of his father, which he saw as his spiritual guide, at least in this case. And so when, of course, just to fast forward the whole pastime, Ram leaves for the forest, the citizens follow. The citizens try to bring Ram back, but Ram tricks the citizens and in the middle of the night, he gets on the chariot of Sumantra and says, let's go. All the citizens had followed them into the forest. They all felt that without Ram, Ayodhya is just like a forest. And with Ram, the forest is like Ayodhya. <laughs> but Ram knew that, they, that he was meant to be there and he, that the citizens should go back and uh, live in the kingdom. Otherwise, without citizens, there's no kingdom. So he tricked the citizens in the middle of the night. He planned an escape and he got away from the citizens. When they woke up, they couldn't find Ram <clears throat> anywhere. Finally, they gave up and went back to Iodia. Bart was away from this whole situation during this time. And Bart, when he comes back, he's wondering what happened. The whole mood of the city has changed. There's no festival, there's no happiness. Finally, he goes to see his mother, and his mother explains the whole thing, that yes, uh, you're meant to be king, and Ram is in the forest for 14 years. Uh, when he heard this, he was shocked, confused, and at the same time, angry. He couldn't believe what had happened, that his mother had arranged for this to happen. 
And practically, he disowned his mother, saying that you're not my mother, you're, you're actually my destroyer. And we have the example of Prahlad Maharaj, whose father was his father. And Prahlad Maharaj loved his father. But when his father was acting against Vishnu, Krishna, and was trying to subjugate the world for his own selfish interests, Pallada rejected his father as his father. So authority, when they don't follow the principles of proper authority, and they deviate drastically, if they deviate a little, then it's the duty of the disciples to bring them back if they can. And when they deviate drastically, and there's no chance for bringing them back, the disciples can give up that connection. So this is what happened. He said, you're not my mother, you are actually my destroyer. And she was confused. She thought she was acting for the benefit of her son. And now Bart's wondering what to do. So he's thinking, maybe I can rectify this situation. I should go into the forest, along with my armies, and bring the mothers with me and everyone and say that we want Ram to come back. We want you to rule the kingdom. I don't want to rule the kingdom. I am not meant to rule the kingdom. You are qualified to rule the kingdom. And therefore, we have to beg Ram to come back. So, he gathers his armies, and the mothers also come. Kaikeyi came, Koshaya came, Sumitra came, and some Vishishta, the guru of Dasarat, he also came. And uh, they all headed into the forest to try to find Ram. By asking many persons, they finally got to the understanding that Ram was now living in Chitrakut, and he was there with Lakshman and Sita. Lakshman's service to Ram is interesting because he felt that he was there to give them everything they needed to be happy in the forest. Two things, privacy and protection. Now, one of the reasons why the Ramayan happened the way it did, or one of the reasons why the Lord appeared in the world is not so much known to people in general, but it's an interesting reason. Lakshmi Devi, who is the eternal consort of Sri Narayan in the spiritual world, wanted to be alone with Narayan. So it's mentioned that by the desire of Lakshmi, which was one of the four reasons why the Lord incarnated, there were three other reasons, was to be alone with her husband. And the forest was the place. And so Lakshman would always make sure that they had the time for the, together in their privacy. And he was their well-wisher, he was their servant, he was their guard. He was everything to, to make sure they were happy and got everything they needed. That was Lakshman. He served in the best possible way. Now he's coming with his armies. And people are not, there was one tribal chief named Guha. Ram met Guha when he first left Ayodhya and spent some time in the kingdom of Guha. Guha served, he was a tribal chief and he served Ram so nicely. He welcomed Ram, honored Ram, worshiped Ram and made good friends with Ram. Ram actually became very close to him. And Guha wanted to accompany him wherever he went to give protection, but Ram explained that now he's meant to be in the forest alone. There's a cold breeze coming in from somewhere. I don't know where it is. So if I look kind of funny with this hat on, I'm sorry, because this hat is really ugly. But I'll put it on anyway, because it's cold in here. <laughs> I think your breeze is... So. Is it on? Oh, it's on. Mm hmm. There's no. Okay. Okay. Then I can take off my silly hat. 
It's a nice hat. <laughs> it's expensive. I didn't buy it though. <laughs> uh, so, Rob, Bart is on his way. Guha sees Bart's army and he's thinking Bart's come to now. He wants to kill Ram and reestablish his rule completely. So Guha is a little suspicious. But Bart meets him and says, actually, no, actually, I'm coming to bring Ram back. So finally, he, he's coming to the area where Ram is, and Ram's on Chitrakoot Mountain, so they're on top of the mountain. And so Laxman, he looks out and he sees the armies of Bart coming, and he gets concerned and he starts speaking very angrily. Now, he's not satisfied with ruling the kingdom. He wants to come and try to destroy us. But he cannot do that because I will destroy him and his whole army simply by my bow. Watch. <laughs> you know, Lakshman has a tendency to, what they say, jump to conclusions. <laughs> he immediately made his understand. He immediately saw that Bart had ill intentions. But uh, Ram said, no, actually he's come for a different reason. And he had to really preach to Lakshman. Because Lakshman was really fired up. When somebody's emotionally in gear, it's hard to stop them. <laughs> but Ram was able to do it and explain to Bart and to Lakshman that actually, um, you know. So Lakshman was humbled by his words. Finally, Bart comes to the area and he tells the armies and everyone to wait. And he climbs the mountain of Chitrakoot by himself in a very humble way. He comes to the place where Ram, Sita, and Lakshman in. He comes in. He sees Ram. Ram sees him. They immediately come together in a loving embrace. That embrace was a long time and there was no words spoken. Just a loving embrace for a long, long time. They were speaking to each other, not through words, but through their heart. And both were expressing their love for each other. Now Bart, Ram begins questioning Bart. How is the kingdom? How are the citizens? How is father doing? How is, you know, he was asking so many questions on what is happening with people and what is happening in Ayodhya. Bra Bart now has to break the news that his father, Dasra, is no longer living. Due to separation from Ram, Dasra couldn't live anymore. His heart was broken, his life was crushed, his son was now in the forest, he felt complete unhappiness. You can die from too much unhappiness, and you can die from too much happiness also. You have to be careful. Either way, it's dangerous. <laughs> That's why sometimes we have to stop the kirtans, because we might lose a few people. <laughs> And it's happened. <laughs> too much happiness, too much unhappiness. And so, especially in Kali Yuga, there's a lot of unhappiness. So then when Ram hears the news, Ram becomes emotionally distraught. He is unhappy and sad, showing great emotion, hearing that his father has left. But then he pulls himself together, and then they go to the Mandakini River, which is nearby, and they offer oblations. He's there to the forefathers and offer a ceremony in honor of the departed Dasaran. Time and destiny are not in our hands. Things happen because of destiny. And sometimes we blame people by what's happening, but sometimes destiny is actually the cause. So this is the destiny is that actually Ram was meant to be in the forest, although 
no one could see them. Bart, he's got so many ideas of how he's going to express his feelings to try to bring Ram back. He said, actually, you are the destined ruler and therefore your father wanted you to come, wanted you to rule, but because he was acting in a wrong way, because he was forced by Kaikei and he accepted it, he says, you're in the forest, but this is not meant to be. You're meant to rule the kingdom. All the citizens are waiting for you to come back and take your position as the rightful ruler. So please, I've come on behalf of everyone, and including myself, to ask you to come back and take the kingdom. Ram said, no one can change destiny. Our reactions to destiny is our only free choice. Time is the factor which determines our fate. So things happen because of destiny. Destiny, sometimes we call it providence, but it really it's the hand of the Lord, which is the unseen hand of the Lord. Why things happen the way they happen. Just like why, what is going on in the world today? How is that happening? This is destiny, this is providence. You might say it's karma. It's also part, providence also works a little bit by karma, but karma, is subordinate to province because province is the will of the Lord. Hmm. So they're both arguing. And Bard said, Ram said, I have to follow my instructions. And I have three gurus, my father, Vashishta, my regular guru, and my mother. These are my three gurus. Bard said, Yes, but your father was not in good mind when he gave the instructions. So therefore, you don't have to accept. Brahm said, this is what the Lord, but my father ordained, and this is why I am here. And finally, they're, they're going back and forth. Ram is telling Bart, you should go. You're qualified to rule. Please rule the kingdom. Citizens are needing someone to rule. I cannot come back. I have to follow my destiny. I am meant to be in the forest. You'll be the ruler of the kingdom and I'll be the ruler of the forest. <laughs> so they're going back and forth. Each is trying to petition the other. And it's all about the welfare of the other. Bart wants Ram to come back because he wants to serve Ram and wants Ram to be the king and he wants everyone to, because everyone else wants Ram. Ram says, no, actually you are qualified. This destiny, and then Ram reveals something that nobody knew. And he tells, he said, when your mother, Kaikei, was petitioned by my father for marriage, he approached your mother's father, the king of Kaikeya, or Maharaj Kaikeya, and the Kaikeyi's daughter, which was the queen of, of um, Dasaran. And he said, I, if you allow me to marry your daughter, Kaikeyi, I guarantee he, her son will rule the kingdom. Interesting. No one knew that except Ram. <laughs> that Dasarat had promised, everyone had forgotten that promise, even Dasarat forgot it, <coughs> that he promised the father of Kaikei, Kaikeya, that his daughter, son, would rule the kingdom. And Ram told that to Bart. What could Bart say? <laughs> so this is the will of providence and it's working just accordingly. So please forgive your mother, forgive me, and forgive everyone, and go back and take the position of ruling. What is forgiveness? 
seeking balance when there is an injustice. Obviously, forgiveness comes in when there's some calamity or some injustice. Finding that balance to bring things back, that is called forgiveness. Hmm. And what is it? Harmony in chaos and love when there is hatred. Bringing in love when there is hatred, bringing in harmony when there's chaos, bringing balance, forgiveness to recreate balance when there's imbalance due to offenses or some discretion in activity. Mm -hmm. There's four points of perfection. What makes things perfect is peace, introspection, satisfaction, and good association. Proper association, beneficial association. What destroys peace? Desires. What destroys introspection? Ignorance. What destroys satisfaction? Material hankering. What destroys good association? Misguided direction. Accepting the wrong association. So perfection in life requires desire, proper desires, reflection or introspection, freedom from hankering for material things, and good, wise association. And then you have what is called perfection in life. Couple all of that, subordinate that to the practice of Krishna consciousness. Bart then speaks on the duties of a Shastriya. And he tries, now he's trying in a different way. He's not simply going to accept what Ram says. He's still trying to get Ram to come back. <laughs> he's not going to give up. <laughs> and Ram's not going to give in either. <laughs> so we call it, you've heard, in, there's a term called tug of war, when two people gather war. But this is called tug of love. <laughs> they both are trying to outlove the other. <laughs> Who can, whose love is stronger? This is a, really a beautiful exchange of love between two brothers. So now Bard speaks about the duties of the Kshatriya. And, and you're a Kshatriya. You're out in this forest. You, what are you, you're going to rule the animals and the birds? They don't need your <laughs> rule. You know? He's trying everything to get Ram to come back. And he's talking about, you know, you're a Kshatriya. Kshatriyas have to rule. <laughs> So, you know, everything you're saying is about not ruling. <laughs> so I'm showing you, this is what you should do. <laughs> Doesn't work. Self-growth is a byproduct of assisting others to grow. You want to grow yourself? Assist others to grow. Just like book distribution. When we distribute books, we're giving up chance to people to grow towards Krishna or to become Krishna conscious. We grow because of that. When we assist another person to grow in their spiritual life, we automatically grow. You don't have to do anything. It happens automatically. Just like they say, when you give Krishna, Krishna gives himself to you. <laughs> That's how it works. Because <laughs> Krishna is grateful when you try to give him to others, he gives himself to you. <laughs> Bard says, okay. <laughs> now he's stay in the forest, but still accept the rule of Ayodhya. <laughs> How's he going to do that? One, mu one son must stay here. One of us has to stay here. So why I'll stay here, you go back. <laughs> I never wanted the kingdom to rule. It was my mother's plot. She was influenced by bad association. I had not even the slightest desire to rule the kingdom. I don't want to rule the kingdom. 
I want you, and everyone wants you, not only me, but everyone wants you to rule. Ram says, I'll rule the forest. <laughs> it's not coming back. And he says, then he says, position and power are not needed to perform one's duties. This is an interesting point. You don't need position or power to do your duty in Krishna conscious. You can be Krishna conscious from any position, as long as you understand what it means to practice Krishna conscious. Convenience means to change the law to suit you. If something you like, you can change, you can change the rules. People try to change the rules to suit themselves, just like we have four regulative principles. And people are trying to find ways to kind of like adjust those four regulative principles to make it three and a half regulative principles, but it looks like four. Mm. In other words, the rules are there, and the, the basis of the rules is for spiritual growth. It's not rules are not meant, it's not rules for the sake of rules. Rules have a reason, they have a meaning, they have a benefit. So the rules are for spiritual growth or for material detachment, either one, which is both the same actually. So convenience means to change the law to suit you, but maturity means to change your life to honor the law. That's maturity. Ram says, charity once given cannot be reversed. <laughs> you have received the kingdom. You have been given it and charity can't take charity back. Now something crazy happens. <laughs> you ready for this one? Okay. A personality appears from the woods. He's supposedly a sage. His name is Jabali. Gadat, are you familiar with Jabali? Did you hear about him? No. This, this guy's a real character. <laughs> and he's supposed to be a sadhu. And he's now coming into the scene. He's heard what's going on. He was listening. Now he walks in. And he says, Ram! Don't you understand? The goal of life is to be happy. The goal of life is to enjoy. The goal of life is it's natural to be in a position to be happy and to give happiness to others. So you, for your own happiness, and I'm here to tell you what is your happiness. You don't know what your happiness is. <laughs> so therefore, you should rule the kingdom because it'll make you happy. <laughs> And Ram is just thinking, we got to get this guy out of here, you know, because <laughs> he's just speaking nonsense. But what he was doing is that Bart had tried everything from all angles to get Ram to come back, but it wasn't working. Just wasn't working. So Jabali comes in thinking, well, I'll use another technique to make it sound like it's for the benefit of Ram to do it. Because Ram's talking about the benefit of the kingdom, the benefit of Bard, the benefit of everybody. And he's even talking about his own benefit. But Jabali says, you don't know your own benefit. You don't know what's going to make you happy. This is going to make you happy. And he's talking like that. So finally... Ram says, you don't know anything. <laughs> You're pretty much stupid. <laughs> he pretty told him a fool. So what Jabali was doing, Jabali was playing and acting. He knew what he was saying was wrong, but he was using it as a way to try to get Ram, you know, when you, nothing else works, you try something else, which is ridiculous in this case. He was trying to encourage Ram on the principle of being happy. <laughs> which was most ridiculous things. So here, Jabali's intention was, was to get Ram to accept the kingdom, but the expression that he gave was not in line with the intention, as otherwise the whole situation was misunderstood. 
In other words, his intention was to get Ram to come back, but his expression was not in line with the intention. It was the wrong expression. Hmm. So then Ram just said, Haribo. <laughs> it was just a little intervention of this personality, Jabali. It's an interesting, you can read it in the Ramayana. It goes on for a few pages, Jabali just talking about the importance of understanding your own happiness and how to fulfill it, and that's the purpose of life. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Vashishta comes in. He's the guru of everyone in Ayodhya, especially even Ram. And he speaks from the position of the guru who guides intelligence, who guides by intelligence. The father gives life, the guru teaches how to live life. The father gives life, the guru teaches how to live life. Ram says, I will follow all the instructions given by my father, my guru, and my mother in that order. <laughs> Finally, everybody fails. Nobody can get Ram to come back. So finally, Bart uses the ultimate weapon. If you don't come back, I'm fasting till death. <laughs> Whoa. Ram becomes annoyed, <laughs> unhappy. He's, he's bothered by what he's, and he says. And he speaks to Bart and validates his source of being. Bart runs, and then he says, you know, Bart, and then Ram again says, I'm following the instructions of my father. This is the destiny. This has been planned by everything. The Lord has willed it this way. You will rule the kingdom. Bart realizes his attempt has failed. So he runs back and tells the citizens. Impulsive thinking causes one to act before thinking. In other words, you think, you act first, and then you think later. Good formula? No. Reflective thinking causes one to think before acting. Always think before you speak, before you act. You may say something or do something you're sorry for later. And sometimes that could be very destructive for everyone. Finally, <laughs> a voice comes from the sky and says, Bart, follow Ram's order. <laughs> Celestial intervention <laughs> descends upon everyone. Bart has no other. Ram glorifies Bart's humility and tells him to rule. Character, a person's character, is better than their abilities. We see many people have many good abilities. But what is their character? A lot of times we are, especially in Kali Yuga, we are ruled by people with no character, but they have the ability to manipulate, to get position, to do things. But their character is something different or something undesirable. But it's better and more genuine to have good character, even if you don't have so many abilities, because character makes the person. A person in the mode of ignorance thinks, if I can get something, I can do something. If I can do something, I can be something. Mode of ignorance. Most passion says, if I can do something, then I can get something, then I can be something. Mode of goodness, uh, passion. Mode of goodness says, if I can be something, then I can do something, then I can get something. So you see the same three in different orders. 
So character is the most important thing. A, a person is judged by their character. Nowadays we judge people by what they have or what they can do. We don't look at the character. That's Kali Yuga. That's why there's so many problems in this age because people are not qualified to lead. And people have, it's not so much, you know, Prabhupada said, teacher, T-E-A-C-H-E-R, English word. Take the letters, same letters, and you change it around, C-H-E-A-T-E-R. Teacher, cheater, same letters, same letters. So nowadays we have teacher people who are in a position of teaching, but all they are is cheaters. They're trying to take position in order to get something rather than to give something. Or if they give something, it's about getting something from what they give. <laughs> so character is better than abilities, or character is better than what you have. You know, wealthy men are honored today but what is their character? A spiritual person is not honored today. Their characters are good, they don't have much, but still, they can give more to others through their character. Hmm. Character is the main thing. So Bart, finally, he's defeated by love, and then Bart comes back after going to tell the citizens he comes back with the shoes of Ram. He brings the shoes, Ram's slippers. And he says, I will rule the kingdom on your behalf. In fact, these slippers will rule the kingdom. So please, bless these slippers, and I will take them back and place them on the throne, and they will rule the kingdom. And so, uh, Ram accepts that, he puts the slippers to his head, or he blesses them in some way, gives them back to Bart. And then there's another loving exchange between Bart, Sitrugna, Sitrugna is also there, the other brother, and Ram. And then everyone goes back to Ayodhya. Before they leave, Ram greets the citizens, he comes down off the mountain and meets his citizens. His three mothers are there, he embraces his mothers, Everyone is crying in separation. And then he gives his love to his mothers, very emotional. It's mentioned in detail in the Ramayan, and finally they leave. When, but when, uh, when uh, Bard comes back, he takes the shoes, puts it on the throne in Ayodhya, and he goes to another place near Ayodhya called Nandigram which is a little forest area. Actually, when I was in Ayodhya in 1999, we visited Ayodhya, we went to Nandigram to see where Bart was living. And it's a little, there's a little shrine there where Bart was doing his worship. And there's a little pond, and it's just a, like an open area near a forest. He lived there for 14 years, and during those 14 years, he, ate only barley cooked in cow urine. That's all he had, barley cooked in cow urine for 14 years. And Sitrugna was there with him, both of them stayed there. And any times there was problems in the, in the, in the community or in the, in the kingdom, people would come to, to Bart with the problems. Bart would go to the shoes of Ram offers obeisances and explain the problem to the shoes. And then he would get the answers and then he would give his answers for solutions. That's how he ruled for 14 years. If you saw this place of Nandigram, you would think, I can't stay there for 14 minutes <laughs> to speak about 14 years. <laughs> and so, this went on, and then, of course, the whole pastime, finally, you know, Ram, Sita's captured, and Ram kills Ravana and brings Sita back. And now, everyone is back. I'm fast-forwarding it really forward. <laughs> so now they're coming back, 
After 14 years, Sita is back with Ram. Uh, the Hanuman is there, Sugriva is there, Vibhishan is there. They're all on the Pushpak chariot going back to Ayodhya. Hanuman is also there. Ram turns to Hanuman. He says, Hanuman, go. And go meet Bart. Go ahead of us and tell Bart that Ram is coming back. And watch how he reacts when you speak him, when you speak this. And if you see any slight hesitation or unhappiness in him, I'm not coming. I'm not coming. So Hanuman very dutifully goes and he meets Bart and he tells him Ram is on his way back. He's coming back and he will rule the kingdom and come back in the association of everyone. Bart is come. Completely happy. Not the slightest bit of anxiety that now he will lose, apparently. He never considered himself the ruler. He always considers himself ruling on behalf of his brother. And so, of course, that was a beautiful scene when they came. Hmm. So there's many lessons in this story. <laughs> Ram tested Bart, Bart passed the test. We value relationships are more important than possessions. Possessions can come and go, but relationships are sacred. Bart, Bart was accused by the citizens Bart was accused by many for having a plot to take over the kingdom. He was falsely accused, only because of his mother. But somehow he tolerated that, knowing that what they were saying was not correct. He didn't try to defend himself, but he simply tried to correct it by bringing Ram back. One's relationship with Krishna must be the most important thing over everything else. Here's an interesting statement. By expanding our selflessness, selflessness, not selfishness, selflessness, by expanding that in our relationships with Krishna, means gaining greater happiness and connection with all living beings. The more we're connected with Krishna, the more we're connected with each other. It's non-different. Sometimes people think, well, Krishna is interfering with my relationships. No. Krishna is the well-wisher of everyone. And as we develop our relationship with Krishna, because Krishna is called Mula. Mula means root. So he's the root of everything, including every relationship we have. When we have a relationship with Krishna based on devotion to Krishna, then we can develop honest and sincere relationships with others. <laughs> Our relationships are not meant for material gratification. Selflessness doesn't impoverish one it enriches one. Now this is a beautiful pastime of the exchange between Ram and Bart. And who could show the most love? <laughs> Ram won. <laughs> sacrifice, sacrifice is the beginning of love. Where there's, lo where there's sacrifice, there's love. If there's no sacrifice, love doesn't develop. So we have to sacrifice in order to develop our love for Krishna and in order to practice Krishna God. But that sacrifice in the beginning seems to be difficult, but as we practice it becomes natural and it becomes joyful. So, so we should always never see that Krishna consciousness is something oh, <laughs> so hard. It's hard because we have material desires. 
That's why it's hard. <laughs> the more material desires we have, the harder it is. The less material desires we have, the easier it is. If we try to fulfill our material desires through Krishna consciousness, we will become, we'll miss Krishna consciousness. <laughs> Now this is an, a nice lesson. It's one of the more sweeter exchanges between the two of them. And it's nicely described in the Ramayana. If you get a chance, try to read this little section. It's very, it opens the heart <laughs> to see how two very powerful and qualified persons are only thinking about the other person and not about themselves. Where nowadays when powerful people come together, they think how to get something from that relationship. But this was not about getting, it was about giving. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so I'll stop here. So there is one question, Maharaj, from the audience. Hmm. Mm. Please accept my humble obeisances. As per Srimad Bhagavatam 9.10.9, Rama, not Lakshmana, disfigured the nose of Shurpanaka. Valmiki Ramayana says the opposite. Can we reconcile this by saying the leader is response? So the leader, okay. The leader is responsible for the acts of the servant. On another example of this would be when it is said, Shiva killed Daksha, but actually Virabhadra did it. Mm -hmm. So, but Supanaka was about to try to kill Sita. So Ram protected Sita by asking Lakshman to attack Supanaka. But he didn't kill Supanaka. He simply just disfigured her, that's all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was, they were just, they weren't going to hurt her, but when she was, she went after Sita, and then Ram did something, and he signaled for Lakshman to act. So he was only protecting Sita from Supernarka. So protection is a natural, it's a natural quality that one, one should protect themselves and one should protect others against danger. Prabhupada talks about how when he came to America, uh, he, was, he was hearing that if someone is being attacked on the street, no one will come and help that person. He was shocked to hear that. If someone is being attacked, no one will come to help. And so Prabhupada was just exhibiting that. Yeah, it's natural when you see someone in trouble and you're there and you try to help if you can. So what Ram was doing was just natural. He was simply protecting Sita against Supanarka and so So there's one more. In Valmiki Ramayana, there are some passages about Rama eating Varaha, Rishya, Prisata and Maharuru, the four principal species of deer. The problem with this is, why would Rama take meat after promising his mother to live on fruits like a sage in the 14 years of exile? What are your thoughts on this? It's another thing they criticize Ram from for. <laughs> when Prabhupada responds that it's Tejo Sam Rajo Sire, Tejo Sam Nado Sire. Don't try to imitate the activities of the powerful. <laughs> Ram can eat the whole world. <laughs> He's the supreme personality of Godhead. He's not under the influence of, uh, of uh, karma or anyone. But sometimes he may do something that our own done. Shiva drank an ocean of poison. Don't try it. <laughs> Jai Sisi Panchatantva Ki Jai. So sometimes a very powerful personality will do something that others criticize 
they can't do, they won't do, they shouldn't do. But for these powerful persons, they're not affected. Krishna was dancing with 16,108 queens. Don't try it. <laughs> you'll be criticized, you'll be vilified. So the Supreme Personality of Godhead is above all rules and regulations. If he decides to do something outside, there's a reason for that. In this case, I don't know the reason, because I don't know that particular pastime. But I know Srila Prabhupada has responded to that by saying, yeah, Ram is the Supreme Lord, and he is powerful. We should not try to imitate him. And whatever he does, because he is the Supreme Lord, it's beyond reproach, it's beyond criticism. <laughs> Otherwise, how can we accept God if we, if we are criticizing what he's doing? He does it for a reason. And just like they criticized Jesus, Jesus went into the, into the, uh, into the forest with many of his followers, and they had no food. So they had some one. They had a little bit of loaves, one bread loaf, and some fish. So by his power, he expanded the bread and the fish. So everyone had the food to eat. And then people will say, "Well, why is Christ eating fish?" Because that's all they had, <laughs> and he expanded it so everyone could have something to eat. When Prabhupada was uh, Talk, was talking to one disciple who was preaching in Russia. This was in the early days when there was nothing to eat in Russia. The devotee said to Prabhupada, you know, I couldn't preach there because the only thing I, I could eat was meat. There was nothing available. Meat and a little bit of milk, that's all there was. Prabhupada said, eat meat but preach. <laughs> preaching is higher. <laughs> If you have to eat something and there's nothing to eat, and you can't, if you don't eat, you can't do your, can't preach. Better to preach, and take better to take the the substance that is forbidden, and preach. And people can't understand that because they don't understand the importance of preaching. But that was Prabhupada's statement. So rules and regulations have a purpose, but in emergency situations, and only in emergency situations under the guidance of others, just like Prabhupada. He did a lot of things different when he came to the West in order to spread Krishna consciousness, and he was criticized for that. But he said, I did it for a purpose because I understood the culture was different and I had to make adjustments according to the culture. So a powerful person can do that but not, not an ordinary person. Mm -hmm. So we can't criticize God. He's God. <laughs> He's not just, you know, a forest dweller. <laughs> yeah, is that okay? Anything else? Well, that's it, Maharaj. There's one more question, but I cannot. I do not. <laughs> yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. um, Hare Krishna, thank you for the wonderful lecture. Um, my question is not di directly connected to the lilas of Lord Ramachandra, but rather mm -hmm. a good association which you mentioned in the context of the four um, the four keys or pillars uh, for the four four 
keys for a perfect life, or perfection oh, in life, for, yes. For principles of perfection. Princi yes, that. Um, peace. Peace, introspection, satisfaction, good, good association. Yeah, so my question would be, um, how can a neophyte devotee who does not have much intelligence or is perhaps <laughs> even naive uh, discern or discriminate between good and bad associations so he does not get misled or misguided? Yeah, well, he, there's a chance he can't get misguided if he acts on his own. But if he realizes he doesn't know how to do it, he should take advice from those he, who do know. Otherwise, he'll make a mistake. I think the first thing is he has to recognize he doesn't know how to make the decision. If he doesn't recognize and he thinks he knows, then good chance he'll make the wrong association. Thank you. Yeah. So if we think we know, we might be thinking wrongly. <laughs> we get advice, and advice is always available. <laughs> Okay, is that it? Thank you. Jai Sri Ram, Sita Ram, Lakshman Hanuman ki Jai, Sila Prabhupada ki Jai, Sri Nam Nomi ki Jai, Sri Fasting tomorrow for half a day ki, Sri Feast in the evening ki. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.